attempt to close the gun club, do you favor gun rights? I absolutely am a supporter of the Second Amendment in our Constitution. As a matter of fact, Washington State's Constitution protects gun ownership rights, uh, I think, a little more strongly or sternly than our Second Amendment uh, to the U.S. Constitution. Uh, there is nothing wrong with uh, people uh, uh, having uh, firearms and using firearms in sporting capacities. There's uh, no uh, nothing wrong with the legal use of firearms to dis defend oneself. Um, so uh, the attempt to close gun clubs, I think uh, there is some a misguided approach that they think that the lead is leaching. Uh, the thought that lead leaches, it actually encapsulates itself. So very uh, the, the in the environment, lead has a, a propensity to not leach, uh, and uh, that's one of the things that uh, some uh, stern environmentalists. Um, I think have wrong, um, so closing the gun clubs I think is a, a poor idea. Okay, thank you. Kathy? It's kind of the same as uh, closing the uh, pig farm down. As people move in, then it becomes a, a problem that it smells. Well, for the gun clubs, it's the problem that it's noisy. Actually, one of the uh, pieces of legislation I'll be working on is helping the man who actually makes the suppressors, which isn't a silencer, but it, it can really dampen this, the sound. Um, if we, you can make them, you can sell them, you can have them. In this state, you can't use them. Makes no sense at all, and I believe if we get logical about having a suppressor be able to be used, then I think maybe the gun clubs wouldn't bother people in the community so much. I've been supported by the Gun Owners of American League and NRA, and um, my family has uh, veritable arsenals, and um, if I ever, ever did anything to take those gun rights away, they'd disown me. Not gonna happen. Um, there is another issue on being able to carry a uh, concealed weapon. Uh, we need to be able to have a, a class and a certification for that that is accepted in other states. Thank you. All right, so back to you, Kathy. This question from one of our participants is, how long should representatives serve? And the quote is, uh, uh, parentheses, term limits self-imposed. Should term limits be self-imposed? I think the people um, have the right to elect whoever they want to in this state. That's what our Supreme Court has decided. If they want to elect somebody for 20 years, like Tim Sheldon, they are very welcome to do it. If they don't want him, then they can unelect him. It's a democratic process. I believe in strongly, and anything that would take away from the, the value of uh, the vote that I have by saying I can't elect this person because he's been in office too long is uh, wrong, and I would fight that, and I will stand up for that. As a legislator, do I think there's times to go? There probably are, and am I getting close to that? You know, it's, it's interesting that it takes a while to learn how the system actually works, and when you just about get to the point where you think you can change it and maybe do something different, if you give them eight or 12 years, just when somebody figures out the system and isn't gonna be pushed around by the bureaucracy um, is when you could end up getting gone. I think it's important that you do your voting not to get reelected, but because it's what you want it, you think is the right thing for people. Thank you. All right, same question to you. Uh, I, I've toyed around, I've toyed with the idea of term limits because there's such a frustration level from the public right now. Um, but I do believe that you have the constitutional right to vote out people um, when they're not uh, performing the way you want them to perform. So. Um, I am not an advocate for term limits. I'm an advocate for the citizens educating themselves and limiting the terms of people that do not vote the way they would like them to vote. So um, I, I, I'm not a fan at all of term limits. And I uh, believe that, yes, you should vote with your conscience and not to get reelected. Um, you're not doing the, uh, the will of the people uh, any good uh, if you uh, vote with your uh, with an eye on being reelected. Thank you. Okay. So now let's move on to some topics that will be covered in the legislature. The first one is the question from the audience is if education is a priority, why is it failing? Is it, it might, uh, well, if, if education is a priority for the legislature, why is it failing? Well, well I 
I ask myself this question and I ask several educators and several principals and former principals. Um, th there's several um, things that, uh, issues that they uh, take with education right now. The teachers say that the state is too involved in education, that they are too involved in the classroom, that the teachers do not have the ability to be creative in the classroom and do a good job to educate. Um, the principals say the same thing. We do not have the ability to actively manage our, our uh, school districts. So I think it's a uh, several fold issue. Um, in, in some um, respects, we're not funding education appropriately, and I think it's because we use uh, partisan politics in the legislature to uh, 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 use education as a, to be held hostage as far as uh, uh, in the, the, the legislation process. I think we need to fund education first in a segregated fund and then debate politics later and not play politics with our kids. Well, that's just what I am all about. Um, funding education, finding new ways to fund education. And I think the biggest thing for our schools is stability so that they know how much funding they're getting. You know, you talk about six-year budgeting. Well, schools are lucky if they can get beyond two-year budgeting. And money comes in for a great idea, the great idea happens, but then the funding goes away and all the, the planning that went into it was kind of a loss. So I think stability of funding our schools is something I've worked very hard on. And, the next thing is the policies that really do allow people to think differently about our education system, but we've all been educated through this system. The teachers have worked in this system. Our school buildings are set up in a certain system, and I think it's got to change. I think there is a much better way to educate kids, and it doesn't have to do with first and second and third grade. It has to do with skills and knowledge. If you get this, then you can go on to the next. Our system isn't set up for that. Uh, the high schools especially, I think our kids could graduate from a high school with real skills and knowledge. If we put them in the forestry service, if we put them in the working in the watershed, they can, they can perform. They don't necessarily have to go on if we can give them the skills and knowledge they need in high school. Thank you. So this is more of a uh, follow-up question to that from an audience member. And the question is, if private schools can teach students for $5,000 a year, why can't public schools do the same? And that would go to you, Kathy. Well, not uh, a lot of private schools are a lot, a lot more than five thousand dollars a year. I would say the more is ten, twelve, to up to twenty thousand a year. For it just depends on the private school. I think your religious schools can do it much more cheaply, but I know also that they ask the teachers to work for much less money, and a lot of them do that and I think it's a great thing and it's a great opportunity and we in many ways have been well served in our communities by the religious schools that are there. Um, the state actually base pay is around I think 6000 a year but then schools run levies and makes more, have more money but the diversity of that is tremendous. Uh, some schools like Lake Washington and those areas actually hire teachers for 20 or 30 extra days where our schools basically stay within the funding level of the state and uh, extra money actually goes for extra programs. There's great diversity and funding is not simple in this state. So moving on to... You let Dan? Yeah. <laughs> moving on to Daniel. <laughs> Thank you. Sorry about that. Well, I, I believe that uh, uh, it, it is a multi-level answer, but uh, the Overhead, um, the uh, public schools, just like any government ent entity, has a lot more overhead than private. Um, we do not run as efficiently as the private um, system runs. And um, that is what we have to get to as, uh, uh, when we're working on legislation. We have to make government more efficient and smaller. Our, our public schools can be more efficient and smaller because we need to make sure the dollars get to the students instead of being eaten up in a bureaucracy. Um, that's about it. Thank you. All right, very good. So now, if I may, uh, and with this, let's move on to pensions. How do you feel about getting government and how about, how do you feel about getting government employees health care and benefit expenses? I guess the question, let me move on to the follow-up one, which is more specific. How, explain how you will pay $22 billion 
for state retired workers' pension and health care benefits. And I'm first. You're first on that. Well, um, I'm very disappointed in our um, the successive legislatures. They have absolutely underfunded our um, pension mandates. Um, when the market was doing really well, the legislature had this, there was this big, um, uh, in their estimation, over abundance of money in our pension system. They asked that we uh, uh, reduce the rate so they could spend the money on uh, different programs. And that is uh, criminal in my estimation. Uh, the way we're going to do it, we, we have to uh, prioritize that that is an issue. Um, there is going to be some, uh, there has to be some adjustments in pension, uh, different pensions. We have a PERS 3, a PERS uh, 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 left, they're looking at left options. Um, I'm running out of time, thank you. <laughs> pension systems are just about as complicated as our education funding system. Um, I know that the left system uh, really asked that firefighters be funded uh, because they put their lives on the line and have many things that happen later on in their life, can they retire earlier? And by making a decision to say, yes, a firefighter should be able to retire a little earlier than a teacher on full pension, those were decisions that cost us more money. Um, with the education system, we're going to have a tremendous number of people retiring and having a fund that is making sure that those people have the funds they need for their retirement is our job and it is a challenge. The truth is our system is not out of money. We, compared to many other states, are doing very, very well with the amount of money in there. It's the amount of money that we have put in on a regular basis that has not really kept up with what should match the dollars that the, the people that are in those systems have paid. And so we do have a responsibility. We must, and I support doing the right thing and putting the funding there. All right, well then staying with finances, since this is a particular topic of interest to our audience, what is the toughest budget decision you will have to make in the 2011 session? And it goes to Kathy. So right now, um, and there's a lot of changes going to go on. The governor's having negotiations with the unions. Are we, they going to pay more of their health insurance? Are we going to still let them pay only about 12%? That is a couple hundred million dollars of the initiatives on the um, alcohol, how it's going to be sold, could have a huge impact. But if it was at $3 billion right now, over one billion of that is the voter initiatives I-728 and I-732, which delivers about $450 per student to local schools for early childhood, um, smaller class size, those kind of things. The other one is the COLA that was supported, which gives teachers a cost of living increase. And we've set those aside over the last two years. Um, if we have to set that aside again, it will be very painful, probably it's the last thing I want to do, but I suspect it is going to be on the table again. That will be very difficult for me. Thank you. Daniel? The, the $1 billion, or uh, uh, a little over it looks like $1 billion in early childhood uh, education would be a hard vote to take, uh, to eliminate. However, I think there is a very, um, uh, there would be, uh, I think there's a smarter way of doing it. Uh, we could probably do it in online um, uh, presentation where we develop the presentation for the parents to help the parents um, uh, develop their kids or um, uh, get their kids uh, up to speed so that they're ready for the elementary and uh, schools. Uh, so that would probably be the hardest vote and the vote to uh, suspend COLAs. If, uh, um, I, I wouldn't want to do that but uh, it would be a hard vote to take but uh, we are going to have to make hard decisions with this budget. All right. So keeping with hard decisions,